trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon to you folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Casey Kantz. Doreen is off. We're going to begin today with a big day in Foxborough. Training camp getting underway this morning for the Patriots at Gillette Stadium. Day one and a number of storylines to pick from. Want to get you a scoop from our guys on the scene. Sports anchors Nick Coit and Ian Steele live in Foxborough today. Gentlemen, good afternoon to you. Let's start with uh, the quarterback. Big year number two for Mac Jones. Hey, Casey, yeah, welcome to Foxborough. We're back here. It is year two for Mac Jones. Uh, we've been here a few years covering this team, and this is a really interesting year going in, Ian, uh, with Mac going into his crucial sophomore campaign. Um, but really, it's, it's the first day of training camp, first of all. And so I know I had my nice polo laid out for me last night. I shined up my apple. I don't think Bill really wanted an apple today. But... This comes from the guy who's had two weeks of vacation coming into the first day of training camp. But the players were rested, yeah. energetic. The crowd out here was great. Mac Jones is really the star of the show, though. The crowd was following him every chance that they got. He, they watched him in his press conference after practice, yeah. asking for autographs, and he obliged with a big wave and a big smile. Mac Jones, this is his team now, and sure. that's become clear here in his second year. Let's show you some of the pictures here from training camp today. Mac was the first guy on the field today, so obviously impressive. And we heard yesterday too, Ian, Matthew Slater say that really this is Mac's team. He's taking ownership, he's taking leadership here. And uh, obviously with the question marks on offense, where they're gonna go, who's gonna be calling the plays. By the way, it looked like Matt Patricia had the walkie talkie today. So that's something that we're kind of looking at here, but he's gonna take ownership of this offense. Ian. And Mac Jones said afterwards that this offense wants to play faster, and with the new coaching staff coming in with Matt Patricia, Joe Judge, and Bill Belichick now focusing on the offensive side of the ball, something to watch throughout this preseason is how fast this offense can play because that seems to be something that they're focusing on heading into the early part of this NFL season. And we'll be watching not only the offense but the defense as well. There will be some youth there. Um, obviously, a big name in Malcolm Butler returning, mm -hmm. uh, so that's interesting to see as well in the secondary. So. A lot of interesting things with this team, Casey, and uh, we'll be covering it. We'll be looking forward to it every day here going into August. Like I said, it's the first day of school. The sports calendar turns to football season. Nick, the polo looks good. Ian as well. I'm glad you had it laid out ready to go this morning. Big, big times in Foxborough. Appreciate it, gentlemen. Nick and Ian will have a full recap of day one of training camp in Foxborough starting on ABC6 News first at 4 tonight. Appreciate those guys. Also today at Gillette, Elton John plays the first of his final shows in New England. Today and tomorrow, the music legend will perform as part of his last North American tour, aptly named Farewell Yellow Brick Road, the final tour. Elton John has been performing for over 52 years. His last show in the U.S., that will be at Dodger Stadium in L.A. It'll be his 2,000th concert in the States. And talking a lot about that, talking about a lot going on in that little neck of our woods in Foxborough uh, today with Patriots training camp starting. Elton John there now the next couple of nights. And I'll tell you, the weather is really cooperating today. Lots of sunshine, comfortable temps out there, Chelsea. Just a beautiful summer day. Good Tr afternoon. Truly a picture perfect summer day, probably in the top 10 so far this summer because those temperatures are coming up into the mid to upper 80s range, which is seasonable, if not slightly warmer than average. We see great sunshine outside. This is the view in Providence, same view up in Foxborough right now, and the breeze is still coming in light out of the north northwest up to about 10 miles per hour in Providence right now. But that wind direction keeps our dew points down into the 50s. We talk about dew points so much in the summertime that 60 degree marker is when we slowly start to feel a bit more muggy. So anything below 60 degrees is some fairly comfortable air, especially considering we're heading into our final few days of July. Low to mid 80s right now for our inland spots. Low to low 80s for most of our coastline, 79 over Block Island. Actually, most of us running a few degrees warmer than where we were yesterday at this time. Not by much, but a little bit warmer outside today compared to yesterday. That's thanks to a lot of full sunshine, high pressure and control for today. Enjoy it. You can see some clouds and some showers off to our west. We'll start to see the muggy factor going up overnight. You start to see some clouds increasing overnight. So enjoy the beautiful afternoon that we have. Uh, we have sunshine expected for the remainder of the day. I'll have much more on the chance of rain through the end of the week in just a few minutes. KC. All right, Chelsea, we'll check back in. Thank you to local consumer news now. Top Golf teeing off in Cranston. Developers Breaking ground this morning on a new location on Sakanasa Cross Road. ABC 6 News reporter Hector Molina live in Cranston today with what type of impact this could have on the local economy. A lot of excitement there, Hector. Good, good afternoon to you. A lot of excitement for sure, KC. Well, this huge 
dust lot you see right behind me will be turned into 215 yards of fairway for a driving range that plans to bring hundreds of jobs and a significant amount of revenue that plans to just be a springboard for Cranston and the entire state of Rhode Island. Now, Mayor Ken Hopkins tells me Top Golf will create about 200 jobs and the majority of those positions will have a starting salary of about $70,000. 200 jobs that plan to have a ripple effect as new businesses are planned for nearby Garden City as well. And the mayor tells me there are some future plans for hotels in the area. Now, the interesting part about this project is that the infrastructure of the range is being funded by the Tiger Grant that was secured by Senator Jack Reed and zero funding by the state or city of Cranston. We did not have to give them one penny. The, the city is going to reap the benefits of all of this economic development and location 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 is the reason why they're here if we had that we had a couple of more projects in this area that we're about to release in the next month you're, you're going to see at least five to eight hundred new jobs created just in this area alone Now, Top Golf tells me the new location will be on par with their other sites in terms of size and appearance. As for when this project will be built and as for when we'll be able to tee off here, well, the, there's not an exact date just yet, but a Top Golf executive tells me that the ballpark date is for some time around fall of 2023. Now, I also asked him, you know, why Rhode Island, what attracted them to such a northeast part of the region, and especially with cold weather months and how they plan to operate year round. You'll hear from him coming up on the news tonight on ABC six first at four live in Cranston Hector Molina ABC six news. Yeah, certainly looking forward to that Hector. Thank you and ABC six news follow up now the city of Providence putting new technology to use that it says will aid in the fight against crime but not everyone is on board. ABC six news reporter Yanni Trigellis has details today of the city's new license plate reader program. The city of Providence officially announcing 25 flock license plate reading cameras are being installed in the city. Now, these cameras will read license plates of cars driving within the city limits. And if a vehicle that is suspected of being part of a crime is pinged off of one of these cameras, police are immediately notified. City of Providence leaders calling this technology a game changer. Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza says these cameras will send a clear message to anyone committing a crime. Your chances of being caught and held accountable are going to go up significantly because of this. 25 solar powered cameras are being installed for a pilot program set to go live in the next month. The announcement comes days after a violent weekend in Providence that included three shootings, including the shooting death of 15 year old Gervonta Tilson, whose family pleaded with the mayor to make these changes. He asked me, when are you going to put cameras up? throughout the city so that we can keep our city safe and hold people accountable. But the cameras have been met with public backlash. Protesters lining up outside the public safety headquarters Wednesday, hoping to overturn Flock's deployment, told ABC6 the city of Providence rushed into this decision. There's only been one sort of really minor public input period, and that was on the policy itself. There's been nothing about the cameras in general. There's been no legislative oversight at all. Public Safety Commissioner Stephen Parre noting these concerns, saying he would be open to a public comment hearing on the cameras. The flock license plate readers will operate by using a hot list, meaning if a vehicle suspected of being part of a crime passes one of the cameras, police will automatically be notified. But a proper stop must still be committed. It can't just be the, uh, the hot list alert. There has to be a section, second action of probable cause for an officer to affect the car stop. A public portal will be made available to track all flock data, including the number of license plates captured and the number of police officers who access the data. They're building sort of a public-private uh, collaboration that's gonna invade people's rights and make it more difficult to travel in public space um, free from surveillance. Reporting in Providence, Yanni Tregellis, ABC6 News. All right, Yanni, thank you. Other stories we're following today. A Massachusetts State Police canine killed in action yesterday was brought to a pet crematorium in Cranston with full honors last night. Canine Frankie was shot as police tried to arrest a man in Fitchburg. Frankie was taken by ambulance to Wachusett Animal Hospital in Westminster under Nero's law. He was pronounced dead at the hospital.
Our ABC6 crew is also on scene of a fire this morning in Pawtucket. Take a look. This is just before 5 a.m. Firefighters on scene on Arthur Street near an apartment complex there. We are still waiting to hear from officials on what caused this small fire there this morning. Prosecutors in Vermont filed a motion opposing Nathan Carmen's release. Carmen is charged with killing his mother at sea back in 2016 to inherit millions of dollars. That boat left from a marina in Wakefield. Carmen asked a federal court to release him from custody pending trial earlier this month. He is facing first-degree murder and fraud charges. Still to come today on the news at noon, back on the job. President Biden returned to the Oval Office after testing negative for COVID. How long his quarantine lasted? Plus severe storms in the Midwest and South turned deadly. The latest extreme weather outlook just ahead. Back with some national headlines today at noon. President Biden back to work in the Oval Office. The president tweeted a picture of a Binax Now COVID rapid test this morning showing a negative result. That means he'll resume regular duties after quarantining for a little less than a week. The president tested positive last Thursday after visiting Somerset, you'll remember, just a day earlier. Well, severe weather continues to impact much of the country. Heavy rainfall in St. Louis has broken a century-old record there. Out west, firefighters continue to battle that oak fire, which has now burned 18,000 acres. Here's Derek Dennis with the details. A state of emergency declared in Missouri amid severe flooding brought on by torrential rains. St. Louis seeing the highest 24 hours of rainfall on record, nearly eight inches in just six hours. First responders wading through waist-deep water to get to trapped residents. Now what one is on the way? Hold on, man. Hold on. Authorities say one person was found dead in a car as the water started to recede. More than 100 people had to be rescued. We had a couple that didn't want to leave, so we had to come back about an hour later because now they were trapped in their attic. Several puppies died when the halls of this dog rescue operation flooded. Other dogs were rescued by boat. The entire state now under a state of emergency with more rain in the forecast. Officials fear the flooding could continue. I don't... Remember the last time we saw a flash flood like this? We knew the rain was coming. Uh, I don't think anyone knew it was going to be this much this fast. In Colorado, at least two tornadoes touched down. Aurora hit with heavy rains and hail. And in Colorado Springs, cars stalled in the floodwaters. In the West, extreme heat is keeping first responders busy. There were more calls to 911 for aid in King County than we've ever seen in the history of 
uh, since we've been keeping records. In Seattle, where just 44% of residents have air conditioning, an excessive heat warning is in effect. The governor of Oregon declaring a state of emergency across 25 counties. Temperatures in Portland expected to remain in the high 90s through the week. And in California, more than 3,000 firefighters are battling the Oak Fire near Yosemite National Park that has already burned more than 18,000 acres and destroyed 42 homes. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Also this today, the space jacket worn by Buzz Aldrin while stepping on the moon has sold for a record-breaking $2.7 million. The auction happened in New York yesterday. Other items sold included Apollo 11 flight plans, including a complete summary of the mission, which sold for $819,000. Aldrin, who is now 92 years old, was the second person to ever set foot on the moon back in 1969. So to come today at noon, Chelsea's got a look at your seven-day forecast and when we might get some rain for your lawn later. Mega millions, well, it's not the mega billions, but the plan is for the next drawing. ABC 6 Storm Tracker Weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. A really good looking day across southern New England. We have mild temperatures, but low humidity levels and perfect blue sky. Look at how calm things are over Block Island right now. In fact, the wave heights have dropped significantly from where we've been really for the last week, along with that Ripris. Ripris finally at a low level today. So if you're getting in the water, of course, you always want to use a little caution, but things should be much calmer outside today. Temperatures at the coastline topping out in the low 80s as we head into the afternoon, sitting around 80 degrees in Newport right now, 83 in Westerly, 79 over Block Island, 83 in the Providence area, 83 in New Bedford as well. A few degrees warmer right now than where we were yesterday at this time, and we'll come up to slightly warmer than average temperatures into the afternoon. That average high is 84. That's what we hit yesterday for a high. But for the rest of the seven day, temperatures should be topping out of the mid to upper 80s range. I also want to point out as we head into our final few days of July that the sunrise is getting a little bit later, and that sunset starting to get noticeably earlier, happening at 8.09 p.m. Of course, still a late summertime sunset, but certainly much earlier than where we were at our peak late sunset time, which was in late June. The breeze right now is coming in out of the north to the northwest, about five to 10 miles per hour, continuing to just keep us with this really comfortable air in place. Almost all of us have dew points in the low to mid 50s right now. Very dry, comfortable air for this time of year, for the later part of July. It's the time of year that you expect the heat and humidity. We had plenty of that 
so far this month. So it's nice to get a little break and you're going to want to enjoy it because what happens over the course of the next 12 hours or so is that muggy factor does slowly start to climb and into tomorrow we really peak. We do have some rain coming into the area. It's also going to feel very humid outside through the day tomorrow. Still feeling very muggy as we head into Friday, but as we head into Saturday and even into Sunday, that muggy factor does drop. It looks like we have a really nice weekend ahead of us. Satellite radar image right now shows you the dry conditions continuing. High pressure is in control and you can see dry weather for all of the northeast. Now a little bit of a wider view does show you some shower activity, some clouds off to our west. We're going to be tracking the system as it gets closer to us for tomorrow and into Friday. I have some rain in the forecast. It's not much, but some hit or miss showers and brief downpours possible at times Thursday and Friday. Let's go through things hour by hour, mainly sunny outside for the rest of the day today. We're partly clear overnight and as we head into tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up. It's going to feel humid outside. We start to see some on and off showers and with the high humidity, there could be a few downpours. Now, honestly, the downpours would be good. We need the rain. What we're looking at as we head into the evening hours, a lot of clouds still lingering, some on and off showers at times into Friday as well. I don't think either of the days are washouts, but the risk of some scattered showers are there and with the high humidity, there could be downpours. As of last week, we have moderate drought conditions for the majority majority of the area's severe drought conditions up towards Boston. This drought monitor will get updated tomorrow morning and I would expect some of that severe to expand a bit because we haven't had any rain over the last week. We don't have any today. Mid to upper 80s out there. It's still comfortable. Overnight we start to feel more muggy and then tomorrow more humid day. More clouds around, but you'll get pops of sunshine as well. Temp should still be in the mid to upper 80s range, but some isolated showers, brief downpours possible. That continues into Friday, but we become sunny by Saturday afternoon, and it looks warm and less humid for the weekend. Casey? Sounds good, Chels. Thank you. Still to come today on ABC6 News at noon. By now you know you're not a winner, but the Mega Millions jackpot now soaring past a billion dollars for the next drawing coming up on Friday. We've got details in a second chance in the Ocean State. Well, the $830 million Mega Millions jackpot surged over $1 billion after no ticket matched all six winning numbers in last night's drawing. Next drawing will now be Friday. If there is a winning ticket, it'll be the third largest Mega Millions jackpot prize in the game's 20-year history. There's also this, too. Heavy traffic crashed the Mega Millions website soon after the drawing last night. There were eight match five winners, and then one had the 3X Mega Plier. That wins you a million bucks. None or in Rhode Island or Mass. A reminder too, there is a second chance if you didn't get any cash for the Mega Millions drawing last night and live in Rhode Island. The second chance drawing is for free Red Sox tickets. Here's how that works. If you enter your Mega Millions ticket in an RIVIP Lottery Club account, three winners 
will be picked today to go to Red Sox games in August. Winners of today's drawings will be contacted within two days. We'll be right back in just a little bit. Stay with us. Not uh, else. It's beautiful out there today. Such a good day mm -hmm. outside today. Uh, sunshine, warm temperatures, but still really comfortable, especially considering it's late July. We head into tomorrow. That muggy factor is back full force. It uh. stays muggy for Thursday and Friday. We'll be more comfortable for the weekend. We do have some scattered showers Thursday and Friday. Some downpours, a few rumbles of thunder possible. We'll take what rain we can get. We desperately need it at this point, uh, but I don't think either of the days are going to be washout days. You'll even get some sun at times. Yeah. I'll hang on to these for tomorrow. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, folks, for joining us today as well. The news continues first at four, and for news and weather anytime, you can check us out at abc6.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later tonight.